welcome to Ray's Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. In, um, in the comments to one of my videos, somebody asked me about the bookshelves behind me. Um, wondered if I'd just casually go through them because they were curious about some of the books back here. Uh, quite frankly, the books that are on these shelves have changed somewhat just in the three months I've been doing this because the whole reason behind this uh, channel is I have most of my collection in storage and I really need to get rid of some of it <laughs> and have a smaller amount of stuff to take care of. Um, the problem is every time I go and get some boxes, I go like, oh yeah, I haven't looked at this in, you know, some of these things probably I've breezed past them, but I really haven't read them in like two decades or so, you know, and many of them at least 10 years or so. Um, you know, I hit some uh, a spot where I didn't have any more money to be spending on new things. So there's a big gap in uh, <laughs> in the timeline. Uh, most of my stuff is older and, uh, you know, um, so it's just, it's fun looking through it. But uh, uh, back, back to my point. My point, and I do have one, is that uh, someone wanted to see these shelves. Um, and I, I have nothing against that. I just don't know, you know, like I said, uh, if you look at some of the things, these have changed. Some of them have gone back into storage after I've talked about them. Some of them haven't. I'm going to take a quick look. Uh, I, um, I I think I've picked out a shelf that's that you know I haven't changed anything on it. It's just random shelf stuff. But like I said, uh, you know uh, <laughs> they 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 changed all the time. So I'm just going to pick a shelf and uh, I'll just go through it real quick. And uh, you can get an idea of what's behind me and what I might do in a future episode. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so um, here we go. I'm going to go down through here. Now, there's the top shelf. It's got a bunch of fiction on it. Um, then there's th this shelf. Oh, I, I'm not going to turn it sideways. That would be crazy. This shelf, I, I'm not going to pick this one because it's got a bunch of titles on it I've already done. Um, then I, when I go down here... This shelf's got a bunch of stuff I've already done. This shelf uh, is partially empty, so it's not that great. So that made me decide on this shelf. And uh, I might not have a lot to say about a couple of the things on here, but uh, this shelf is the one I'm going to go through. Okay? I'm going to pull these off here, and uh, I'll flip through them, and I'll say what I have to say about them. Okay, so I've got all the books stacked here beside me, and I'm going to flip through them real quickly. Um, first off, there's, uh, 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 as you might have gathered from some of my earlier things where you saw all my, um, uh, fanzines for, uh, exploitation films from around the world. Uh, let me see if I can straighten this out a little bit there. Um, I'm into, uh, I'm into exploitation films and, uh, uh, this, this is, uh, Spaghetti Western books. Um, and, uh, the, this one's, uh, Fab Press, a, a publisher I really like. I really love their books. Um, it's a really nice, it's a really nice book. It's really well done. Lots of great color pictures, uh, well written. So, yeah, so that's a, that's a good one. Happy to have that on my shelf. Um, this one, uh, I who's the publisher of this? Uh, so this is a, this is a, uh, this book's good. Uh, it doesn't cover as many films. Um, it, it's, uh, more of an, uh, of an analysis of, of, um, the making of some of the films and, um, You know, talks about uh, talks about them a little more in depth than the other book. Uh, like I said, it doesn't cover them. Uh, it's a good book. I kind of prefer the Fab Press because it's covering a lot of different ones, not in so much depth. But um, I kind of like the shorter reviews and stuff because I I look for a reference and I agree with that. The analysis the the guys doing for the Fab Press book and. Uh, I give it a slight edge. This is a good book too, though. 
Um, uh, here's Eric Stanton. Stanton, I mean, God. Uh, he is a he was a cartoonist, and he's mostly famous for. Um, I'm gonna put some of this stuff down. And uh, you know, he's mostly famous for his fetish stuff. Uh, you know, and you know me, I love an exploitation cover. These things were, uh, um, yeah, this is cool because Steve Ditko worked with him. They shared a studio and they worked with each other on various things. <laughs> it's cool to think of Ditko, the Spider-Man artist doing this kind of wild stuff. But uh, maybe I'll go through this one a little more. In the future, um, uh, uh, these are two more Fab Press books. Now you really can tell uh, they had been putting these out yearly to coincide with a uh, film festival that they held over there. They're a European publisher; they're out of England, uh, and they these went along with the film festival. They kind of the COVID thing kind of knocked them out for at least a year. Um, but these are these are good. Uh, you know, usually written by one person. They're good overviews of, like, this is about grindhouse movies. Uh, you know, that's a pretty wide umbrella, so it covers a lot of different things. Um, it's a fun book. I, I like looking through these books. It gives me ideas for films that I want to rewatch or want to track down to watch. Um, like I said, grindhouse is a pretty big catch-all kind of thing. This one's on... Uh, vampire movies that is a totally huge subject you know with tens of thousands of movies probably at this point um so they're trying to hit the highlights uh, i think they do a pretty good job uh it's an interesting it's an interesting book i mean you're you know if you're any kind of movie fan you're going to argue with some of the things they put in and some of the things they left out but as far as these kind of things go i, I think it's very well done Again, it's Fab Press. They always look great. Um, here's uh, Jim Rugg's Street Angel. Um, and no, I'm not try trying to kiss up to the cartoonist kayfabe guys because uh, I do enjoy their channel. I don't like every one of their videos. They they cover a lot of superhero stuff that I'm not into and, and different things. But, but I like their channel a lot. And they were very inspirational for me to start this... Um, my making these videos, one of several. Um, watch my behind the scenes video and you'll get an idea of the kind of things that were uh, instrumental me in, to me doing this. Uh, anyway, this is one of Jim Ruggs. It's a collection of uh, some of his Street Angel. I like the Street Angel um, comics. They're very fun. Nice and violent. This this is the later stuff, so uh, it's not as crazy as the earlier stuff. The earlier stuff is about to be collected uh, this summer of 2023, and uh, it's a little more underground, a little more hardcore. Uh, fun stuff, though. He's He really is a great cartoonist. He has, you know, he does a couple of uh, gags in here that are little cliche but i really enjoy this um i actually have so many different versions of these things um but uh nice collection let's see uh and here's uh my original most of my original marvel and dc comics because that's what i grew up reading in the uh, 60s and the early 70s although i um i at one point i sold off all my comics for and for barely anything they weren't in great shape because I read mine to tatters. But, you know, I get nostalgic for some of those things. Uh, and so these collections came out. And uh, I think they're they're pretty good collections for the price. Um, you know, I didn't... You know, those giant five and 600 page things uh, cover a lot more than I'm interested in seeing, I think. Uh, th this is a nice big chunk of these different things. You know, Last Boy on Earth... I always loved uh, animal people. You know, anytime you have that kind of stuff, you know, I love the wolf man. I love, you know, out the, the, 
even the terrible movie, The Alligator People. Um, so that's that's a good one. And here, of course, is the the new gods. These are these are great. They're they're a lot of fun. Like I said, I'm not gonna bother trying to recreate my old collection from when I was a kid, but that's good. Um, these are the uh, these are the second editions of Raw. The first one were those oversized art kind of magazines, and this is more raw in a format for the people. Um, these are really easy to find. Um, they have really great stuff. They do. Uh, they have some, you know. They do. Uh, they they have Miles, of course, was still uh, being serialized. There's a lot of current cartoonists. And there's also the go and find some older cartoonists to uh, cover. So, you know, like I said, I'm not going to go through these. This is just to show you the shelf. Um, I was trying to see. Oh, there's, there, that's a nice, <laughs> this is fun. Gary Panther stuff. Uh, there's Crazy Cat. This is a classic. So those are, those are fun. Um, this is all Roots Lead to Rock. I'm a big fan of, uh, blues, uh, early rock and roll and country. Um, it's funny because I'm also like punk and there's some crossover there. Just ask, uh, John Doe of the, of X. <laughs> um, so, uh. This book is, uh, it's a Bear family reader. What it is, is there was a German label that was putting out box sets of traditional American music, Carter family, early blues stuff, you know, Piano Red, uh, you know, and rockabilly stuff. Like they have giant collections of Sun Rockabilly or Sun Blues and all this kind of stuff. Um, and they're famous for having fantastic liner notes these are these articles in here are basically um, some of the liner notes rewritten and put into book form. So uh, this might be good for some of you people who might want to listen to these people on Spotify. And you go like, I wish I had that bear family for the liner notes. Well, some of them are some of them are in there. This early, you know, it's supposed to be there. Screaming G Hawkins and uh, so um, anyway. That's a that's a fun book. Uh, um, I bought this. Uh, this is uh, the 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 brother of one of the guys who does uh, one of the YouTube channels I like, um, and uh, I picked it up. I haven't read it yet. I started reading it. It, it seems pretty good. I just haven't gotten through it. Um, this is a, uh, horror book. Um, I, th I think this is a pretty good one. Cause I, I think I, I think there's like five books in this series and I've read a couple of them. I think it's good. I don't know. It's, I'd remember it better if it had set my world on fire. Uh oh, more cartoonist kayfabe. Um, this is my, probably my favorite thing that Ed Piscar's done, which is good cause it's the newest. So that tends to, uh, you know, it's his torture and murder thing and luckily there's a lot of character work he's got a, a, you know ed's cartoonist you know he's really experimenting with cartoony but still trying to make it semi-realistic um i think he's doing a great job i really like this like i said it's my favorite stuff um i think the first place i ever saw ed's stuff was uh in american splendor but i don't remember it at all by the time he was doing artwork for Harvey P. Carr's American Splendor. I was just buying it because I had loved the early stuff so well. I don't really remember Ed's stuff, to be honest. And uh, I did. I do have an issue or two of Hip Hop Family Tree around. That would, wasn't really my jam either. Uh, anyway, and definitely the X-Men is not something I'm interested in. Um, but I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm a big horror fan. Like I said, I, I think he's doing interesting stuff with the characters work in this. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's really well done comics. So, there. There. 
Now maybe they'll love me. Um, Glenn Cook. Uh, I bought this. I'm a big fan of his uh, series of um, pulpy uh, fantasy books about the Black Company. I highly recommend it. I got this uh, on sale for, I think I paid $2.99 for it, and I haven't read it yet. But I really like The Black Company, and I do plan on reading it. And, uh, you know, it's it collects three of his paperbacks from this series together. And that's, they, they do that, they do the same thing with The Black Company. I have The Black Company in the original paperbacks, but I also have, uh, they also collected them together. Three in a book. Um, Hex, this is a horror book. It's a great, creepy thing about a, a witch who has cast a spell on a town. She's cursed a town back in the Salem witch kind of days. Uh, although this isn't set in Salem or anything. but um, And uh, it's a great, super creepy book. The one thing I'll say is, at the he changed the ending of this for the U.S. market. Uh, his editor asked him to, the U.S. editor. And he changed it from having demons from hell coming up and grabbing people to just the townspeople turning on each other. Um, quite frankly, that whole humans are worse than the supernatural element, which is a, a big thing in a lot of these books, I, I find that pretty disappointing. Um, it's a great book, well worth reading. The problem is that they... They talk about the original ending in the back of this book, and he talks about the changes. And, he, and he's going like, oh, I'm glad my editor made me do it. It works much better. Uh, bull. Um, so uh, I would have much rather have heard, read your uh, description of the demons coming up and grabbing people and doing terrible things. Um, the thing is that that chapter talking about that, uh, this is the first printing of this. The subsequent printings have dropped that chapter where he talks about the original ending. <laughs> I think they realized they made a mistake by telling people about the other ending. Uh, why not just do a, a another version of this and put out the put out the translate the original ending, okay? Anyway, good book. I still recommend it even with the changed ending. Super creepy, super messed up. Um I was given this as a gift. Uh dog biscuits. Um I'm told that I'm going to think it's funny. I haven't started reading it yet. It's a pretty big book. Um, the artwork is pretty funny looking. Uh, looks interesting, um, but I haven't started it yet. That's why it's behind me there on the shelf. Um, this is a, a manga, Super Dimensional Love Gun. It's a lot of fun. It's really kooky. There's a lot of crazy, weird visuals in it. Um... Uh, I won't say too much about it. Uh, oh, and this is this manga that's right beside it, and I didn't do that on purpose, but PTSD Radio is another super weird manga. These were on a list someone had done online of their favorite horror mangas. Um, you know, they're they're not straightforward at all. They're they're both they're all they're both really weird. This one's weird because it keeps jumping back and forth between different narratives so um i th think i think the idea is that it's supposed to be the psd the radio part is that someone is switching back and forth between the channels or the stories so you see a chapter from one story then it goes to another then another so you know you uh you're kept on your toes both of these have very wild images um some really interesting stuff uh let's see um uh, if you saw the the movie annihilation and a lot of people don't like that movie it's kind of uh, it's kind of an art house science fiction horror thing um i enjoyed it it made me want to read uh that book and this is the trilogy of it i haven't finished it yet uh but it's all three books in the series it's it's really it's really well written what I've read so far so look forward to finishing that you um, Garth Marenge's um, this is a a book that they put out to go along with a a, a BBC uh, TV show I can't explain the whole thing it's on YouTube 
It's Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Um, it's about a... Th th he played... Garth Marenghi is a uh, fictional horror writer. A lot of people say he's modeled after Stephen King, but he's really modeled after some of the British horror guys who kind of uh, did some of the less well-written horror books. But he's a popular horror author, and this is a... This is a takeoff on that whole, that whole conceit. This is done, the, the TV show is from like, well, it's well over a decade ago. And it's a parody of, of British horror TV show movie kind of things of, I guess, the 80s or 90s. And, uh, and <laughs> just look, just look it up. If, you know, it's, it's a crazy, crazy funny show. I'm not going to explain the whole thing. This is supposed to be a quick breeze through this shelf on my book bookcase. So, <laughs> um, uh, Buddy buys a dump. I have all the issues from this. Um, and Prison Pit, Prison Pit, I was buying as it came out. There's now a collection. In fact, I, I did a. This is the complete Prison Pit. All the comics from all the different issues. I, I highly recommend it. Great slice of crazy fun sci-fi gore. Um, but this is what the original books look like. <laughs> and uh, the Buddy Buys Dump. I bought this because I I saw it for a buck. I bought it. I, I don't know why. Go figure. I'm sure that we've all got stuff like that. Uh, this is another one I found really cheap. It's... Uh, an early reprint of some of um, Fritz Lieber's, uh, I think you pronounce it Pfeiffer and the Grey Mouser, um, the the sci-fi, I mean not sci-fi, fantasy stuff, uh, kind of like, uh, uh, not really that much like Conan, but a lot of times they get lumped with uh, Conan because... Um, you know, they are sword and sorcery, but they're they're a lot more fantasy kind of stuff to it. But they're really they're really fun stories. This is a this is a cool book. Like I said, I, I got it for very, very cheap. Um I'm not sure if it's worth anything, uh, but uh Um This is a uh book from Last Gasp about the Krampus, the who's gotten a lot of popularity. You know, the devil of Christmas, as they call it. Um, it's a pretty cool collection of the images. <laughs> it's a fun little book. Um, <laughs> whenever I see uh, uh, one of those things where it's just cartoonists in their studios and they always have the bookshelves, they always have uh, the little Lulu by John Stanley. Um, the only, the the first John Stanley I ever saw, I, I you know, I it, I probably could have seen him earlier, but to me it looked kind of like um, Little Dot and, and, and those kind of comics, the Harvey comics that I didn't like very much. So I probably wouldn't have picked it up when I was a kid. I probably wouldn't have realized. Um, Marvel, I think it was, um, reprinted some, or, you know, they tried to make a go of reprinting some of these in the 70s, maybe maybe it was the early 80s, and I got a couple issues. Um, this volume doesn't have any of those ones that I remember so fondly from the Marvel ones. One of the other volumes does. Um, I think these are a lot of fun. They're definitely worth reading. Uh, Stanley has some... They're, they're just really... They're plotted much differently. They move much differently than the average kid's comic. They're really kind of odd. And that's what makes them fun. Um, uh, this is a book about the Universal Universal Studios horror classics. Uh, 1931 to 1946. So it's a definite, um, you know, uh, vibe to it. You know, it's all these, you know, the black cats uh Frankenstein the mummy um werewolf of london um it's a great reference book uh the i don't always agree with how they um talk about the films where 
whether or not a film is worthwhile or something. I don't always agree with how they rate them, but it's a it's a really good, it's thoughtful reviews, and there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. If you're interested in the Universal Horror films, I'm pretty sure this is still available. McFarland has kept some version of it in print. I actually have the first vo first edition, and that's the second edition, so kind of tells you. Uh, this is one of those um, best American comics. I got this at. Uh, I might have bought this one full price. Some of these I got really cheap at uh, Daedalus Books, uh, a uh, a remainder bookstore that used to be near us that I, I sadly miss. Um, so this this particular one was edited by Har Harvey P. Carr. Um, I had some of these. Uh, I had gotten some of these. This is a... Uh, I'm not sure if this came first or the Marvel one where they were making fun of themselves, but they're basically letting independent cartoonists make fun of their characters, having a little fun. And uh, it's an okay book. And finally, I have this. It's the complete eight ball. Uh, I won't talk about, I don't, I'm not probably not going to talk about Klaus very much on this channel because, boy, there's a lot of people talking about Klaus, you know, cartoonist kayfabe. And uh, plenty of other people, Klaus is, uh, and rightfully so, talked about a lot. Um, now, I, as you might have noticed if you've watched my other videos, I have all these. I have the original runs. I have multiple copies of, of a lot of them, a lot of issues. So, um, but I went ahead and bought it. You know, all those issues are scattered in all these different boxes around. I'm, I'm trying to get things organized, but until I do, this was a great thing. This was a... A very important comic to me when it first came out and still is. I still, I love it. Um, so anyway, that's one shelf off this bookcase. Um, if you saw something in there you'd like to see me do um, an entire issue, uh, a video on, let me know. Um, and uh, ooh, I realize now I don't have anything here for you to look at while I talk about this. Um, and uh, if you want, if enough people like this, I'll, uh, I'll do another shelf. All right. Have a good one.